<laughs> what do you want to talk about, Bobby? <laughs> what do you want to talk about today? Well, uh, how about culture? I'm saying uh, culture must have uh, presented itself as a barrier uh, between Neanderthals and humans. Remember, the humans are coming out of Africa. They're going into Europe, right? They're nomadic. The Neanderthals are sedentary. You know, they're, they're in their own turf. They've been there 500,000 years. We're invading them. So we're migrants, you know, and they're not. They're, they're, they're settlers. They're, they've settled the place. So that's among the other things. But there's a couple more, like, did we uh, have a one-night stand? Was it, was it just a couple of incidences where maybe a uh, Nantico raped a woman or something like that? What are you talking about? Why you lost me? <laughs> well, it got to do with culture. Yeah, it's got to do with culture because the question is, what was the family type? What was the mentality of a Nantico? Try to, we're trying to think, you know, put our brains in his brain or yeah. trying to figure out what, what he was thinking. Uh, did, would he go out there and uh, rape a woman, or would he have long-term relationships with humans? W were they buddies? Were they neighbors? Were they friendly neighbors? And they said, yeah, come join the bounty of the land. We're, we're going to hunt together. Well, you said that they were neighbors. If, if the humans are invading... Invading. Well, we call it an invasion. It's a migration, right? right? Assuming. But they and, saw each other? Well, again, admixture claims that they saw each other and they did a little more. And so what, what I'm putting on the line here is whether the cultures of, the hum, of humans and the Neanderthals, were it, whether it permitted for them to mingle and be neighbors and friendly and, you know, out there in the wild, right? Did they hunt together? Did, were they beer buddies? Did they swap wives? Or were they enemies? And, you know, oh, I'm going to kill you. I mean, what was their relationship? So in that sense, culture does play a role. You know, what, what was their mentality? What role does culture play in the neighborliness of these two species? Well, look at it from this point of view. Uh, they've discovered, they've discovered that uh, from sub different bones, right, that... Uh, Neanderthals did engage at one point or another in cannibalism. Oh shit! Yeah, they they and they cut their own people. You know, they you they see chop marks in the bones that they said this wasn't done by a tiger. This was done by a Neanderthal who who were trying to get the, to the bone marrow of his own kind. So now uh, think about that for a second. Here's this ape, this monkey. I mean, if if you visualize him like I do, as an ape, a monkey, an Arctic. <laughs> Well, chimpanzees, uh, gorilla. Chimpanzees also eat each other, don't they? They do. And so, and so the question is, here's this guy who, who does cannibalism. He, he kills mammoths uh, with, a t with teamwork. You know, there's maybe 10, 15, 20 guys that go out there with their spears and they fool the animal and they stab him, they kill him, they all eat. Yeah. He, he's living this very, uh, you know, basal type of life. He, he's, uh, he's got, he's, he's really a very prehistoric type of hunter-gatherer and to think that this guy would ex who kills his own kind would accept an invading group of animals which he <laughs> obviously regards as a different species would they mingle would they say okay come on uh, you 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 can sleep with my wife today and i'll sleep with yours you know, it's, it's very hard to believe. The culture would stand in the way of such a rugged species that, you know, that thinks of only the basics, of only killing some animal, eating, and living one more day. From there to extrapolate that, they would invite humans in, they had a great party. Well, does it have to be an invitation? Like, it can be uh, animosity and still have intermingling without rape, necessarily. There was, there was fighting even, the worst en enemy of a Neanderthal was another Neanderthal. That's what I'm saying, it's like, and, they're already enemies but, with everyone. But then, but then we got to look at, what was the family structure, what was their culture like? And that's what I'm getting at. I'm saying, one way of figuring that out is to look at the great apes that we have today. What kind of societies do they have? You know, you got the gorilla, he's got a patriarchal society where 
you know, he's the dominant, the silverback, he's the dominant guy, right? And he's got his harem. The chimps, they don't have that same situation. They, they have a kind of like a uh, fatherly figure who's not the strongest, but the smartest, the guy who can manipulate the others. You've got the orangutans, and they're solitary. They're like the tigers. You know, there's one orangutan, he's got several women, uh, several females, and they take care of their own regions, and he kind of visits all of them. <laughs> so they all have these different structures. The question, what was the structure of the Neanderthals? Uh, you would think that if they had some kind of clan structure, which is more than likely, what kind of sex did they have? Well, the sex that <laughs> is, 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 uh, is already theorized that they had group sex, that everybody slept with everybody. Father can sleep with daughter, you know, everything was fair game. All females were fair game. Right, and you would think that at least the hunter-gatherers were more like the apes, the, the chimp, uh, the gorillas, the chimps, the orangutans, where they had maybe, you know, a fatherly or a macho figure, an alpha male or whatever, and uh, they all hunted together and they lived in a cave. You would think that it's like a clan structure. And that's a very close-knit society because that's the country, that's the flag, that's the national anthem. That group, you fight and you die and you live for the clan. And they plan on the other side of the street. And eat each other, apparently. Well, no, you would eat someone on the other side of the river. Oh, that's what I was he, He's your enemy. You I know? thought they were eating their own family. I don't, I don't think so. I think they, they killed someone from the other clan across the street. Yeah. They were enemies in that sense. Okay. And if you've got this situation where the female, and, you know, the, the way they form new clans is, you know, the youngsters, the teenagers, they leave the clan. And they go off, and, and so do females leave the clan, and they form new clans somewhere down the river. You know, they, that's how they expand, and after several generations, they lose track of each other, and they become enemies. Because the cousin, the long-lost cousins, yeah, yeah. you know, after three or four generations, you don't even have, might, you might not even have the same language, the same grunts. Yeah. Ooh, 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 what does that mean? Yeah. We don't say, yeah, we don't, say, we don't use those, the, that language here, you know. <laughs> Uh, I mean, we have languages today. They must have had different languages or grunts or, or signals or whatever, you know, hand or whatever. Type Some of way of communicating. Yeah, and it that's different. That must it differs have from, from clan to clan. It must have changed over the ages. And, and so after three, four generations, these sons that left the clan, they created new clans. Now they're all cousins. They don't recognize each other's family. They're, they've got their own clan here, and that's an enemy clan over there. Yeah. And under that situation, you would think that here's an invading human who wears clothes. I'm assuming Neanderthals did not wear clothes. And so they have different morphology, you know, obviously. So they stand out. They, they would stand out, and they kind of, maybe the smells were different. Remember, these guys probably marked their territories, like lions do. They marked their territories and say, hey, don't come in here, this is my land. And for them to say, oh, come on, buddy, let's have a beer, and you can but sleep you with always, my wife. You always go straight to, come on, buddy, let's have a beer. Yeah. Did it have to be so friendly? Well, okay, but that's, <laughs> that's the point. That, that, that's the point. That, that's what I want to get to. Let, listen to a couple statements, and you'll see how, how they contradict each other. Here's one from Green. This is from the seminal paper on the genome. The actual amount of interbreeding between Neanderthals and modern humans may have been very limited given that it contributed only 1 to 4% of the genome of present-day non-Africans. When was that written? Uh, 2010. Now here's Vernat. Two facts. And this guy says something totally different. He says Neanderthal admixture occurred multiple times in different non-African populations. So did we have many times, or was it a one-night stand? Was it just... Uh, Neanderthal raped or whatever a woman out there in the middle of nowhere. That's how we got all our genes from from the Neanderthals. Or was it a continuous, you know, uh, intermingling? Were, were we friends? Were we neighbors? You know, and I'm saying that you must, in order to get rid of all the Neanderthal, in order for them to become extinct, you must have generation after generation after generation. You have to have mingling. You have to have sex. You can't just have a one-night stand and say, oh, from that, all the Neanderthals became extinct. You see what I'm saying? A little bit. I mean, you can't say, okay, so we had a one-night stand. You're saying, you're I'm saying, saying you, uh, can't, you can't explain the... the extinction of the Neanderthals was a one-night stand. Extinction with, of the Neanderthals. The only, saying it, that, that they only raped one woman. And, and you still have to explain how, how the they, Neanderthals they, died. Right. Yeah. 
imagine now the, the Neanderthals, you know, they, they have sex with us, right? Two or three guys, one night stands, right? Mm -hmm. uh, rape or consensual, I don't care. The point is, now they gave us a little bit of their genes, right? Yeah. So there's two, three, four, a hundred guys, but there's thousands of these Neanderthals. What happened to the rest of them? Why did they interbreed and continue, you know, having children? We would have Neanderthals today. Yeah. Assuming so, nothing bad happened. Right. Like so, so, so we still have not explained the extinction of the Neanderthals because two or three of them had sex with us. Yeah. I'm, I'm, assuming, <laughs> that, I'm assuming that they say that we that were constantly intermingling with them. The only way you can do that is what you just said. It has to be generation after generation, constantly intermingling. Then we could say, yeah, they're they, they, all, they got, uh, to the last man, to the last Neanderthal, they all had sex with us. Yeah. Generation after, then we can explain that. But if it's just a one-night stand, like these guys are trying to say here, like, yeah, we had a little bit of sex there, that doesn't explain the ex extinction of the Neanderthals. And so that's one issue, So uh, you know, that I think is important because, again, if these guys were violent and they killed, uh, you know, animals just to live, just to eat, and they had, were engaged in cannibalism, it's very hard to believe that a mind like that would suddenly accept or tolerate some other species in their hunting grounds and say, oh yeah, you can go ahead and hunt and you can have sex with my wife too. Mm. It can't be a one night stand. It has to be friendliness. You have to have this wildlife friendliness where we say, okay, you, you can join us. But why does it have to be friendly? Well, how else can you explain, how else can you explain that they had sex over many generations, not a one night stand anymore. Now we're talking about many generations where they mingled and had sex, they had kids, right? And they had, and these had kids. And eventually, you know, the Neanderthal blood died out because they were, a smaller population. Yeah, can it be something like the humans went in there, killed all the males? Ah, but then we're not talking about sex. See, I'm, I'm talking yeah, about yeah. admixture, sex only. Yeah. So how killed do you... all the males? Oh, okay. And slept with all the women. Okay. Wouldn't that? All the women. Yeah, or nine. Can't be a one night whatever. stand. Yeah. See what they're saying is uh, there. There was two guys that had sex there, and the no, 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 but ninety nine percent of the population was not touched. Let's that's assume, the point. Let's assume like humans went in there, killed all the males, mm -hmm. and just took their wives. Okay, let's would, assume that. Wouldn't that be admixture in essence? No, it would be killing. <laughs> <laughs> Not because the women are still alive. Yeah, but you're killing all the male. You're 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 invoking a different kind of mechanism. You're saying that what happened here is that we wiped out the males. That's that's your starting point. Yeah. You said you we wipe out the males and we had sex with the women, right? With, with a Neanderthal female. Like, like a war. Like a, like a war. It was chimps do that. Chimps do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they go to the next uh, tribe over there, the next clan over, and they kill the males. They kill the old ladies. Humans do that. that. <laughs> I, was, I, was I was reading the Iliad, and that's all they talked about. We're going to make the men all, all our slaves and sleep with their wives. That's all they talked about when they were talking about the yeah. of the city. And so, yeah, you can, you can concoct many scenarios. My point here is what the official... Uh, what the papers say. What well, the, how do, how do and they're they, saying there was a one night stand from there we got our no, well, two to four percent. Yeah, many. because there's a contradiction. One says, but again, it says Neanderthal admixture occurred multiple times in different non African populations. Uh, in other words, multiple times. Yeah, what does that, that mean? Yeah, that sounds kind of that, that just means that, okay, it just didn't happen once. It happened. Uh, there were it was three two times. guys. It was, yeah, it was <laughs> ten guys. Uh, no, you have to have... The only way the to only do that is, is generation. Or, or, no, you or, or you kill all the males and take their wives. Okay, or friendly. Many, many generations uh, of, of uh, you know, mingling, you know, friendly, um, neighborliness. Yeah, friend, friendly, I can't really see. Yeah. I can see a war of them just taking the women. <laughs> you know, that I can see. Yeah, But yeah. then you're right, that wouldn't really be extinction through admixture, that'd be extinction through war. <laughs> What is an extinction through war? The other one is hard to believe that basal hunter-gatherer, you know, just a rudimentary type of hunter-gatherer, would carry out a full-fledged war where all these clans. Well, it's not a war. I'm saying I'm saying like quasi-war, where the humans kind of go in there, kill a, the male, all the males of a clan, mm -hmm. and then just keep going and killing off all the males of the yeah. clan. That kind of like territorial yeah, yeah. taking over. Yeah, you could. 
I guess, uh, concoct a, a plan like but that. But you're right, there really wouldn't be an admixture extinction. That really would be more like an yeah, invasion yeah. extinction. And the worst part about that is that we have no mitochondrial DNA. That means we inherited no uh, mitochondrial DNA from any Neanderthal Oh, yeah, mother. So we had yeah, that's a separate issue. Separate. Aside so, like, from culture. We would have to kill all the women yeah. <laughs> and let and the males have our wives. It would have to be like that. Maybe they killed all our males. Uh, we <laughs> no because then they'd be in Africa. We'd see the animals yeah. in Africa. We can't really have that either. That's one issue. Another one that was is, a lot of issues. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, another one was there a lack of females? I mean what? was there a lack <laughs> of yeah, I mean the Neanderthals here. Uh, why would they have to have sex with our women? Did they have like, women over there? That sounds like, like like something my wife would say. What? I'm not good enough for you. You have to go sleep with that human girl. Yeah. And 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 then the question is, I mean, if this if this was rape, that's one issue. Another one is if it's consensual. We're like we're neighbors, and your wife comes over and she has tea with me. <laughs> is that what neighbors do? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know it's a really friendly neighbor. Do you have some sugar? Yeah. yeah you know? Sugar, maybe your wife. I don't know. So she comes over, she has sex, what, in the cave, in front of all the squaws, all the Neanderthal squaws, they, they, they're just looking there and say, yeah, just, he's having sex with a human, you know. I mean, does that sound realistic? Or vice versa, you know, the Neanderthal going into our cave and having sex with a woman over there. Yeah, I don't know. I think rape, rape and war sound like the most like, logical... In the wild. In the wild, yeah. But then it can't be a one night stand. It's got to be generation after forget, generation after generation. Forget the one night stand thing. It's definitely not a one night yeah. stand. Yeah, and that's what these guys are saying to justify the small amount of DNA. That's why they bring oh, that up. Yeah, See, no, there no. is a reason for that. <laughs> but, but why do they have to say one night stand to justify that? Can't they just say that it was kind of diluted? Like it used to be 50 50, but then he, there are so many humans that it's so, slowly diluted. They have that argument as well. They've got both arguments. But. Because of what the genetics shows them when they do regression analysis on the DNA, they say, well, you know, the only way we can justify this is if, you know, they had like... They didn't do it so much. Right. Ooga. So, what should we do with it? Make sure the theorists. Well, let me tell you what I think. Kawabunga!